Hi everybody. So, today's video. We'll be doing the seats in my new bus. Finally getting on with it. And this was filmed over a period of um, probably a week or two weeks because at different stages had to do different things. And we had work to do in the workshop as well. So it took a bit of time, but we got there in the end. Uh, there's one part um, right at the beginning when I show you the seat. And I'll show you two different seats, a cream and black one, and also the grey one. We actually installed both the grey ones, um, because I did try to stain one of the seats. It didn't come out. It came out really, really bad. They're going to both be recovered, and then replace the grey ones that are in there. Also, I've had a few audio and technical difficulties lately with the audio on the videos. So there is a part during the video where you see me carpeting, and I have done a time lapse of it. Um, I'll show you the cutting of the carpet, laying the carpet. So I'll put a bit of music and backing track for you to listen to while I do that. Um, but you do see at the end, me finally get the seats in. Um, and it was a bit of a drama to get, you know, because it was taking them out, putting them in. We had an issue or two on the way. So watch this week's video. Um, have a look at the issue. It's quite a big issue, really, because it would have stopped me getting in and out of the van. And see what you think, and let me know in the comments below. Anyway, less of me, and let's just get on with this week's video. <laughs> Welcome back to the workshop. Today <clears throat> we are going to be working on seat bases for the new bus. Now let me take you over to the seats that we're going to be using. So this is the seat. Um, there's one over there as well. Let's say we've got four of these seats in total. They come out of a Saab convertible. Right, let me do a little bit of explanation for you. But the seat frame we've already got is way too small to fit these seats. Right, just so you can see the scale of it, that is the original seat frame. And it fits sort of under there. And look at the gap at the top. So this seat frame is nowhere near wide enough. Probably not even long enough. My next challenge is I need to work out the height of the seat. So I need to work, measure the height of the seat that we've originally got measure the height of this one to make sure the height of the new seats going in match the height of the old one. That's most the most challenging part because it's all the mathematics bit. I'm not saying I'm bad at mathematics, but it's a lot of working out and I have to write these things down because otherwise I end up with seats that are way, way too high or way, way too low, whichever the case may be. Right, I'm gonna go and do the mathematical bit and work it all out and then come back to you when we start cutting the metal and welding the frame together. Right, so I've done all my measurements. I know what size I need. I'm going to be cutting up some 25mm box section steel. And this is what the frame will be made out of. I know you can't see me on the camera. You don't want to see my little ugly little mug. You want to see this stuff. Right, so this is the original seat frame. Now at the front has a height of 235, no, sorry, 225 mil. Now at the back, it's 
it would have sort of, I suppose 210 if it was lifted. If it's down, you know, it's... So the actual f floor in the bus is obviously got some sort of curvature in it. So it's 200 like that and 210 there. So what I've decided to do, I'm gonna make the higher 15 mil, the front, sorry, I'm gonna make the front of the frame 15 mil higher than the back of the frame. Um, Cause when I look at it again, we've got 220, 210, so it's 10 mil and down it's, so we do a 10 mil difference. So it'd be slanted and be 10 mil lower at the back than it would be at the front. But the seat I noticed adjusted, so it lifts up and forward. So there's plenty of adjustment in it. Fingers crossed my calculations are right. If not, I'm pulling it back off and we'll have to build another one. Right, so I have cut eight pieces of metal. This is literally top and the bottom. So, you've got 500 mil sides, but that's the orientation of the frame at the moment. This is the front, no, hang on a sec. I need to check this. Right, luckily I had a good look at that. This is the back. So the floor slants backwards from the front, or slopes downwards from the front. So, once that on, that's on there, and on the slope of the floor, that sits flat. So the back will be higher than the front. So again, let's do it that way so you can see the width-wise indifference. Right, so that's gonna be the size of the seat frame. As you can see, there's quite a big difference. And there'll be two of those, so in essence, There's your metal for the two frames, the top frame and the lower frame. And then we put our risers in between. But I'm gonna put a few risers on this one. Um, so I'm gonna have access to the storage area under the seat from the front of the seat on the passenger side and from the side of the seat. No, hang on, sorry, no. It would be from the front of the seat on both seats actually. Um, we'll have access to the storage under there. Right now it's a case of just working out the height of the little risers. Um, and my first point I will do on this will be the two at the back and the two at the front. I will put two box section pieces across here welded in, which will have the holes in to mount this to the floor. Um, it's got more sturdiness that in that way by using box section. I was gonna use some steel um, plate that I've got, but I'd rather stick with box section stuff. It's a big old bus, takes a lot of weight and we've restripped a hell of a lot of weight out of it. Um, and we'll add it back with stuff like this.
call that a winner. So when I was last talking to you on here, I was sorting out the carpet. Well, as you notice, we're sat in the driver's seat of the bus. And if you look there, we also have the passenger seat in. There's one major issue with this. Obviously, there's no doors. We haven't got a door over there, and we haven't got a door over here. But the biggest issue is the gap between the seats. And then that framework there is going to be where the dining area finishes. So it's going to be up here. So there's about that much gap there to get through. So I pondered, I've rattled my brain, and I'm going to have a front seat whether it kills me or not. That second front seat has got to be there. Because originally this bus come with just the driver's seat, no passenger seat. But there's only one thing for it. I've got to take... The driver's seat i'm oh, sorry i've got to take the passenger seat out remove the passenger seat and then i'll bolt the frame but then move the frame a lot closer to the window now let me show you there's a massive gap down there and that gap is wasted space so we're taking the passenger seat out off the frame and then we're going to move the frame that way. Also, the other problem to with, with, we've cut the carpet. So the piece we cut out the carpet over there, we're going to bring back and glue in place over this side. Um, because the carpet's got a certain amount of pattern, it shouldn't notice too much, but it is a bit of a, a bit of a ball ache to say the least. Um, me getting too excited about getting the seats back in didn't even think about the gap but I thought there'd be plenty in it because this where the seat base holes are I thought there'd be plenty of room it's just me and the seats are a lot wider than normal van seats and it's you know it's bloody 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 blah, 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 blah but there's only one way to do it remove the passenger seat then relocate the base close to the window to fill that gap which will give us so much more room between the two seats. So yeah, a little bit, I'm not disappointed and the fact that I didn't think of that is really annoyed me. Anyway, so we're gonna get this seat out. Yeah, there's no other way of doing it. So this is the reality of building a camper van. And all these other YouTubers out there building their vans, and it's always perfection. Pants, I say. Total pants. Everybody comes across a problem, but there's so many of them building out there, and um, you never see the little mistakes. You never even hear about them. They don't talk about them. You get it all on this channel. The good and the bad. And the ugly. Finally, we've got the gap sorted and it's easy to get in and out and as you can see there's a bit of furniture board there but that's in another video not today's video so i'm just going to show you the seats for now and you can see the gap where i get in and out so there you go a nice gap to get in and out of the seats 
that's the base of the passenger and that's the base of the drivers I've yet to put a surround on that one this is about the seats really more than anything and so there's a lot of junk on that seat and I'm sat in the driver's seat so yeah there you go finally got in and there's finally enough gap to get between the seats so it was a little bit of a drama because I say there is loads of space over the passenger side because these buses are very wide there are fixing points for the seats on the passenger side because they're still the Iveco chassis but unfortunately they were too close for these size seats it's nice to actually get these in it really is nice they're very comfortable in fact, they're extremely comfortable. So when we come to do long journeys, um, it's going to be a pleasure to drive without a doubt. Like I said, if you can see the bit of furniture board behind me, we're actually working on that and the dinette backwards. Um, also, there's, you might see in the back as well, a few bits and pieces have been done. But again, that's coming up in another video. We are a little bit behind on the videos for uh, this bus at the moment. We will catch up. We will get there, even if I have to put two or three videos out a week. Um, but I promise you, um, we're looking at changing the format of the videos, maybe shortening the videos just down to maybe 10 minutes at a time and maybe doing two or three um, videos a week. So if you like that idea, let me know because it's something I've been thinking of, um, putting out more regular content. Instead of waiting a week, waiting maybe sort of three or four days between each video. Uh, or if I can time it to put three out a week, or if I do enough content to put three out a week, I can do maybe a Tuesday, Thursday and a Saturday. Anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know if you're liking the videos, if you're finding any value in the videos is more important. And if you're enjoying what I do. And yep, show season is coming up. We will be going to our first big event on the 13th of May. Um, I do, uh, and I am aware that Camp Quirky is on that weekend, but we will not be at Camp Quirky. There's another one being held in Shaftesbury. And that is called Van Life Chill. Um, and that's at the Turnpike Showground. If you've got any queries about it, any questions, put them in the comments below. And I'll send you links how to get tickets for it. And hopefully I'll see you there. There'll be a lot of other YouTubers there. There's going to be a lot of people there. We've got a food wagon there. We, I think it's going to be a bit of music, you know, fire pits going. But it's a chill weekend. Time to chill, time to relax. Have fun, have a lot of drink, a lot of food. And meet loads of new people if you can. Anyway, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. And I hope to see you very, very soon. I hope you're staying safe. hope you're staying well. Most of all, staying really, really happy. Bye for now.